I'm about to drop the hammer and dispense some indiscriminate justice! Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance, everybody. My name is Christopher Belly. I'm a certified CPA accountant. I'm a long-term bullhead investor. I'm author of the book Stopping a Broke Loser. It's on Amazon. And holy crap, did I find an interesting video on YouTube by some guy named Travis Wingo. Now, in this video titled All Ruined, Kathy Wood, Meet Kevin, Jeremy Financial Education are done, son. Well, they're not done. They all have massive incomes by basically selling lies. And the worst offenders, in my opinion, are Kathy Wood and Jeremy Financial Education. Now, I know you guys might be like, oh, why are you not being mean, mean to meet Kevin? Well, at least meet Kevin doesn't charge $20,000 up to, which I don't, I don't even know what Jeremy's charging now. But when I called, they quoted me up to $20,000. At least he's not charging people that much. And then you have Kathy Wood charging 0.75% of her assets every year in management fees. That's a huge grift. So I want to watch this video. I'm not going to be too hard on this guy because I don't know. I don't think he's trying to sell any courses or anything. But his thought process is sorely mistaken. And he doesn't understand why some people like me are criticizing these three stooges. So just a little bit more about this guy. And I'm sorry if my camera freezes. Okay, I OBX or whatever it's called. OBS sometimes sucks. He's a multimillionaire, senior software engineer, real estate and stock investor, and he studied economics. I'm a total finance nerd. Good for you, but you still don't seem to grasp the issue with these investors. So let's watch his video and I'll give some commentary about why I think he's totally freaking wrong and why these people, Kathy, me, Kevin, and Jeremy, should be derided for their stock picking abilities. So let's go. And meet Kevin is a scammer who can't pick a stop to say, but is a clown. Jeremy Financial Education has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. And meet Kevin is a scammer who can't pick a stop to save his life. And all of his courses are complete scams. How do I know this? Well, look, I'll show you. This is ARK Innovation ETF. It's down 55% year to date. Mm -hmm. The top 10 holdings, Tesla, Roku, Teladoc, Square, Zoom, Shopify, Spotify, all down year to date. Mm -hmm. And here's Tattooed Chef stock. This is Jeremy Financial Education's favorite stock. It's All right, let's pause here. The stock's down. That's 100% true. Do I hate Tattooed Chef because the stock went down? No. But if you look at the bottom right here, kind of bottom right, you see quarterly financials, March 2020. Net income, negative 17 million. Diluted earnings per share, negative 0.22 per share. Net profit margin, negative 24.35%. Maybe, Travis, maybe that's why I'm critical of some of the stocks that these people are buying. Because are they buying them for fundamental reasons? No. They're buying highly speculative, unprofitable, share-diluting trash because they're just praying that everything works out in the long run. That's not investing. This photo right here, this freeze frame, shows you exactly what I'm talking about. Down 53% year to date. He can't pick a stock to save his life. Look, over the last six months, it's down year to date in six months. That's a lot of money to lose in six months. Kevin was big on a firm stock. Look, this is down 75% year to date. Go down to the financials, buddy. Come on. Date. Obviously, that was a bad stock pick, right? But also, guess what? The S&P 500 is down 16% year to date. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 12% year to date. The NASDAQ Composite is down 25% year to date. So what he's doing here is he's saying, well, a firm got annihilated. Tattooed Sweaty Nutsack got annihilated. It put the indexes got annihilated too. And that's true. We're in a bear market. Nobody's green except short sellers. And that's perfectly fine. This is just more of a buying opportunity to accumulate shares and broadly diversify total world index funds and hold them for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. However, you cannot compare an index 
which is primarily composed of profitable companies, to the crap that these people have been telling you to buy. Tattooed Chef, highly unprofitable. Affirm, he didn't show the financials, but the last time I checked, it was losing money hand over fist. Kathy Wood's Ark, all the companies in there are massively unprofitable and burning money hand over fist, with the exception of Tesla, which I think is a bubble. So to compare an index, which is down, but down much less, to something like Tattooed Chef, there's no comparison, okay? You cannot compare a garbage unprofitable company, small cap, to an index. It's ludicrous that you could do something like that. The Russell 2000 index is down 21% year to date. Guys, I need to kind of get something off my chest here about this because there's a lot of people out there who are hating on a lot of other people for their stock picks in the short term. Now, no, it's not. I don't care about stock price fluctuations. I have 5% of my portfolio in BABA. It's gotten freaking wrecked. And of course there's risks with BABA. But if you look at the fundamental business, look at the fundamental business, it is highly profitable and it is a cash generating machine. There's a difference between buying a company like that that's sold off and buying a company like Tattoo Truckers Taint. You have to understand the difference. But yeah, BABA fell massively. Maybe I did not consider the massive risk of the CCP cracking down. Maybe I made a mistake. I don't know. But if I buy a bunch of companies that are profitable that I believe are trading below their intrinsic value and I look at their financials in the long run I'm going to do a lot better than if I'm somebody like me Kevin or Jeremy or even the worst offender the queen Kathy Wood who just doesn't care they just buy whatever stocks look good in the day oh the revenue growth buy it that there's a massive difference between those two which this guy doesn't seem to understand so even if tattooed chef goes up 10x is tomorrow or not tomorrow, tomorrow's not a trading day, Monday at 10 X's, guess what? I don't care. If the business is trash fundamentally, I will criticize the stock. If the business is good, I will favor the stock, especially if it's actually trading at a good value. Do you understand the difference there, Travis? These people don't know what they're doing. They don't. You cannot compare, you cannot use the examples that you're using and have that be a fair comparison. It doesn't work. Now, I really like the stock market. I think that it provides a level playing ground for pretty much anybody to make a ridiculous amount of money if they know what they're looking at. But the problem here is a lot of people are thinking very, very short term. There's a lot of people who loved Kevin, who loves Kathy Wood, like six months ago. A year ago, they were the most famous people on the planet. I'm not even joking. Everybody thought that they were like gods, right? And now here we are a year later from that point and everybody hates them because the stocks that they picked, the stocks that they loved are down. Okay. Go back and watch my videos, Travis. Go back a year. Was I criticizing them? Yes, I was. Like I said, I'm very consistent with my investing philosophy ideology. I don't care if the stock goes up massively. If it's a trash company, it's trash. Go look at you, my Unity videos. Go look at them. People made fun of me like freaking crazy because I was dumping on Unity, my boonity. And guess what? Unity kept going up and it kept going up and it kept going up. And I kept looking at the fundamentals and I said, this does not make sense. This is stupid. And lo and behold, the stock got freaking wrecked and all the freaking critics and clouds have now shut their mouths because I was right. It's the same thing with the companies these people are buying. They're trash. If their fundamentals improve, maybe they'll be a buy. Maybe Tattooed Chef will be a good deal at some point. I'm not saying it won't be. But what I'm saying is right now, things are looking pretty dark for that company. Okay, so here's the deal. I have read a lot of of investing books, a lot of investing books from a lot of different people with a lot of different perspectives on the market. I've read Random Walk Down Wall Street, which advocates for index funds, all the way to Intelligent Investor and Security Analysis that explains how to actually pick stocks, 
all the way to one up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, which advocates for actually buying individual companies and stocks and how you can vastly and dramatically outperform index funds if you just buy good companies that make money with products that you love that other people just didn't realize existed because of Did you hear that? Buy companies that make money with products that you love. Is Tattooed Chef making money? Hmm. Part of your life and not part of theirs. And the one thing that they all advocate for and they all agree on, regardless of the perspective, is that stocks do not make money in the short term and you cannot depend on that. I 100% agree. If you buy a company that has great fundamentals and the stock price doesn't reflect that, sure, you're not going to make money. But if you buy a stock that has trash fundamentals, you're probably never going to make money. Do you see the difference there, Travis? Okay. Peter Lynch has a famous quote where he actually says, all my best returns came in year three or four, not month year or four, not week three or four, or not day three or four. Okay. Year three or four so just give jeremy more time guys and here's what's gonna he's gonna get lucky on one of his stocks that's how it always works if you buy 10 trash companies one of them may you know overcome all the obstacles overcome the odds like tesla did and rock it up especially if there's a short squeeze and he's gonna claim he's a freaking genius it's that's his whole grift he just buys a bunch of trash that's heavily shorted and if one of them squeezes and goes up massively I knew it, but at the end of the day, he's just looking at revenue my avenue. That is it. Nothing else. And if you don't believe me, I'm sorry. You're a lost cause. If, if, if you don't watch his video, if you watch his videos a ton and then you watch mine and you see how I look at companies versus how he does, I if you still don't see his investing philosophy of just, as just being gambling degeneracy, you're crazy. And this guy doesn't seem to understand that. I'd love a response video, Travis, but I don't know. We'll see. This is the long term. Even Dave Ramsey, if you've read The Total Money Makeover. I'm older than you, boy. I'm older than you. I've read that book. I like to get different perspectives on that and everything. It's a long term strategy, all right? So let me explain something. If you take a look here at the S&P 500. Oh, oh, you mean an index that has a bunch of profitable companies? Sure. Over its entire maximum time frame here on, on Google Finance, right? This is just from 1982. Obviously, it existed far before that, but this is just from 1982, right? We look and we see it's up 3,300% all time, right? Right here, we have the dot-com crash. From the top of the dot-com bubble to today, we're up quite a bit. Hmm, so if I buy a globally diversified index, I'll grow my wealth as the world becomes wealthier. Hmm. But if I buy an individual stock that's highly unprofitable and speculative, is it going to do the same thing as this? Is it guaranteed? No. No, it's not. You are much more likely to build long-term wealth, maxing your tax advantage accounts and buying broadly diversified total world index funds. Instead of speculating on freaking clown stocks, especially with people that tell you this stuff and they charge you thousands of dollars for their courses. Do you see the difference there, Travis? Jesus freaking Christ. So he keeps going in the video, blah, 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 blah. And you know what? You can listen to him. Here you, oh, let's see, let's see what he has to say about tattooed butt crack. Now, also, these companies that these guys are choosing, like Tattooed Chef here, all right, on the one month is down 30%. It's only been public for a couple years, right? This was a SPAC last year in 2021. So it's only been public for a couple of years. So it really hasn't had the time to actually mature into a real company yet, okay? That's a good point. Maybe you should wait until they actually show improvement in their financials and then buy it at that point. Because trust me, you can still make a lot of money if you get into Tattooed Chef when it's, you know, just starting to turn around. But a lot of you clowns bought it up here in the tens and twenties because people on YouTube were supporting it, pumping it on their channels. And what freaking happened? You bought a fundamentally worthless business at an extreme price in a frothy market with stimmy checks flying around. That's stupid, okay? But Tattoo Chef may at some point be a buy. But with negative 24% profit margin, increasing negative cash operating cash flows every single quarter, and a 10, 11, 12% gross margin on average, no! 
No, 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 no. If you make money on this stock buying it now, it's out of pure freaking luck, not because you're an investing genius. If you're buying, if you bought Tattooed Chef in the 20s, you made a stupid mistake and you had no idea what you're doing. That's just the facts, okay? So that's it. Travis, I don't agree with you, but whatever. We'll see what your channel becomes. Maybe you'll turn into a grifter. Maybe you'll turn into a, a strong man fan. I even commented on his video. He got back to me pretty quick, too. <laughs> and you guys have a wonderful day. Cheers!